Hey my friends, Sean Tierney here from theautomationblog.com with an update for April. Um, the big news was that we finally reached 10,000 subscribers. I want to thank you all for subscribing. It's such a huge milestone for a YouTube channel to get that high. And I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, please feel free to let me know your thoughts on uh, new videos you'd like to see us do and new content you'd like to see us do. You know we're right now in the middle of... Uh, the automation show ep, uh, season one we're getting ready to record uh, episode 40 uh, 41 and 42 here i've got some hardware over in studio b this is studio a that we uh, plan to cover and uh, just having a lot of fun doing it and then when we finish uh, season one we'll go to season two and start doing uh, a lot of ethernet stuff and uh, hopefully we're going to get uh, some more equipment in we got uh, promises for of equipment from siemens from mitsubishi again i continue to reach out to rockwell to try to get somebody to come on the automation podcast and tell us about their products as well as group schneider phoenix and uh you know we'll continue uh, asking amron and 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 uh, wago and all the major suppliers to come on the show and if they want to send us products to send us products and let us test them out for you to see how they work but with that said um i want to tell you what's new i know a lot of you uh watch on youtube but you don't get over to the website so i wanted to give you an update like i did last month or a month and a half ago about what we've done over there as well, because we got four writers, uh, five, actually six or seven writers. Some of them are uh, write more often than not. And I want to kind of share what we've been doing over there. So let's go over to the computer. And uh, before we do that, I did make a major change to our Patreon. Now, if you pledge at the $10 a month level to support us, you will get episode, uh, season one of the Automation Show free. We will give you a coupon for Vimeo where you can download it. And, uh, and, and have the entire season for life for free. Of course, we're still filming it, so there'll be more episodes added. But that's over 12 hours and over 41 videos. So uh, I want to uh, just update that as well, let you know about that. Now, I know some people don't like, some people don't like uh, the monthly pledge. They'd rather just make a one-time uh, donation to the channel. So if you want to, you can, for $30, you can get the season one of the Automation Show right from Vimeo. I'll uh, put the uh, URL in the description. So you can click on that if you'd like to support the show with a one-time gift of $30. You'll get, again, the whole season for life, um, et cetera. The big difference is Patreon, you'll, you know, when season two comes out, you'll get that for free. And then when season three comes out, you'll get that for free. So um, that's the only difference here. But in any case, we appreciate all your support. Um, uh, in addition to that, let me see here. I want to go to theautomationblog.com. And we've had, I don't know over a dozen new articles. So I just want to go through them quickly with you to show you what's over there in case some of it interests you. Um, here's Brandon Cooper's article. He talked about getting SIP data in from your Stratic switch. Uh, Brandon's been a great help as a freelance writer for us because uh, he's doing products in his plant that I actually don't have here at the Automation School, like Stratic switches, ETAPs, and whatnot. So um, in any case, oh, you can see the ad for the shirt I'm wearing. This is the one with the, uh, the little logo on the front and the big logo on the back. So this comes in all kinds of different versions, the automation blog, the automation show, et cetera. Um, in any case, uh, let's go to the next one here. Uh, this is another one by Brandon. This is, he had a project where he had to convert some control, control net IO to ethernet IO. So I walked us through that process and you know what he had to do. Um, this is one I wrote about uh, training online versus classroom training. Of course, I work full time at the automation school so I'm doing all online training, and and um, this was be really before, well, March 13th, before COVID really uh, kicked in and really um, made everybody stay at home right around that same time. But, um, you know, there's a lot of advantages to classroom training. All the vendors have phenomenal classroom training courses, but a lot of companies, they just can't afford to go to those, and that's why, that's why I actually left my job for 25 years to open the automation school to make training more available and less expensive. Um, I also did uh, an article on tips uh, for working efficiently from home. You know, like I said, after 25 years, I, I started my own business, the Automation Blog and the Automation School, and um, I learned a lot. <laughs> how to, you know, I had worked at home maybe once a week back when I was, you know, in my previous career, but working at home full time, there's a lot of things I learned, and I, so I wanted to share that with everybody up there as, uh, you know, that was uh, March 16th, so it was really starting to hit home. And then uh, Brandon also talked about the changing routine at his plant and how he was holding a lot of online meetings and how he didn't always go in every day so uh, he talked about that as well 
And then he uh, did a, uh, an article about bridging networks with RS links. Uh, we recently picked up another uh, DHRIO, thanks to our patrons. Um, so we're going to be doing some of that on the automation show here in the coming, uh, coming uh, weeks. But uh, he wrote a nice article about that. Then uh, one of our new uh, uh, freelancers, uh, Farhan, he's uh, covering Modicon, and um, he, uh, he did this article on configuring the Ethernet port for an M340. I've, I've actually asked the guys from uh, Group Schneider to come on the podcast and give us a PLC update because I don't know anything about Modicon except that they've been around since the beginning, right? Since 68, 69. Um, <laughs> I found this out. This is something I keep track on. Um, because, you know, I teach courses. One of the courses I teach is PLC Basics. And, you know, one of the things is, you know, you get the free emulator, you get the free software, you can do everything without having to buy a PLC. You can buy a PLC if you want, but a lot of people are, you know, not looking to invest a couple hundred dollars in a PLC they'll never use at home. Um, they just want to learn at home so they can be better at work, you know, or, or maybe move up in the organization or whatever. So um, Rockwell uh, continues to change their website and uh, continues to uh, break links to previous previous uh downloads so i updated this for 2020 it was working in march it broke in april with the change they made so if you know anybody who needs to get rs uh, rs logics micro starter light and rs emulate 500 and rs links light for free um they can come up and get this article this is um actually i got a shortcut for it the automation blog.com forward slash mld for micro logics downloads and uh, it'll take you right to this article because uh it changes so often I have to keep updating it. Um, Brandon uh, wrote this article about using controllers time in Studio 5000. You can see a picture of one of his uh, panels there. And as well as he wrote this article about converting PLC5 ladder programs to control logics. And then uh, Nilish is back continuing his uh, IoT uh, series uh, using um, Raspberry Pis. I think I said Andrinos earlier, Raspberry Pis to get data from PLCs into uh, AWS. And this is all very inexpensive, something you could try at home if you were interested. Um, and with that, those are all the new articles. Of course, we've had uh, several new episodes of the Automation Show, I think five, and then three new episodes of the Automation Podcast, in addition to, uh, and to uh, what we saw uh, there on the blog itself. A um, couple other things uh, I want to talk about is uh, we continue to reach out to all the major vendors. Uh, Siemens has promised to send us a new S7 1500. I'm excited about that. And uh, this was all before COVID, so I don't know how that changes it. Mitsubishi also promised to send us an HMI, so I'm excited about that. Um, they both have sent us PLCs already. You've seen in the previous episodes. Um, I continue to try to work with Rockwell. I mean, I was trying to get a press pass for the June event in Boston. But I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, I, Siemens is going to fly me out to the uh, to their manufacturing and automation to cover that, um, but that got canceled. You know, a couple of months ago. So um, excited to have hopefully have Schneider, uh, Group Schneider, uh, give us a Modicon overview on their PLCs on the Automation Podcast. We haven't scheduled that yet, but I'm hopeful. Also, I uh, got a new contact at Phoenix. No pun intended. <laughs> got a new new contact at Phoenix to maybe go over their product line on the Automation Podcast. Continue to reach out to Omron, Wago, and other vendors trying to get them on the podcast. And, you know, we love it when vendors send in hardware like ANC and RTA have in the past. And, you know, Siemens and Mitsubishi to cover them on the show. And um, we're actually going to be expanding out this way. The Studio A and, and Studio B will both be expanding so we can have more room to put those uh, those products on, on the board here. And leave them up if, if, it's a, if it's a donation to the automation blog or a sample they're giving us. We can... Uh, leave it up on the board and uh, give them a little free press and appreciation for, for the samples. So with that said, um, if you know any vendors who you think we should be covering, please let me know. You can always contact me over at theautomationblog.com. Um, I'm also always looking for new writers. So if, uh, if you want to write for us, please, uh, you know, get in contact with me. And uh, with that, I just want to wish you all a very happy, healthy, and safe May. As uh, April is wrapping up here, hopefully we're through the worst of the COVID pandemic and uh, we can all get back to normal times. But with that said, again, I thank you all for helping us hit 10,000 subscribers. That's just an awesome milestone. And uh, until next time, my friends, peace.